This is The Philosophical Angle, and I am your host, Chris Angle. I am the author of four books on philosophy, one of which is The, economic equations of econ uh, the Philosophical Equations of Economics. These books are available free for viewing online at www.philosophypublishing.com. Along with me is my discussant and panelist, Rick Samuelson. Rick graduated from Yale, has an MDA and MBA from Wharton, an MA from Tufts, and uh, is presently a venture capitalist and retired from the investment banking industry. Welcome, Rick. Thank you. The purpose of the philosophical angle is to examine the nature and concepts of topics being used in current media and compare its essence with the usage and circumstances and how they're being used. This week, the subject is the negative GDP that's been reported of the U.S. economy. And so let's start. We're first going to uh, go to the headlines over the last 12 months, a uh, 12, I'm sorry, the last month, and uh, to get a feel of why this may have occurred. Some of the negative headlines from the Wall Street Journal dealing with economics and general political matters are such as Eurozone factories continue to struggle tepid job growth fuels worry. German data, dent, dense growth hopes. Eurozone jobless rate hits new high. Others include retailers fear payroll tax. Eurozone outlook falls. EU car sales slump. Euro crisis damps German growth. New home sales fall 7.3%. Economist Schiller calls U.S. housing market neutral. Consumer confidence tumbled again in January. Recovery shows a soft spot. The U.S. economy shrank for the first time in more than three years in the fourth quarter. Some pretty ominous headlines for January of, the, of 2013. But there were some positive notes. Amongst the headlines was ADP, private sector, adds 215,000 jobs. Asian economies show strength. China housing signals recovery. Consumer outlook improves even in the face of higher taxes. Retail sales, meanwhile, rose 0.5%. Home building rose 12%. Federal reports point to slow growth. Inventory of homes for sale hits lowest point since 2005. Durable goods orders rise 4.6%. Home sales recovery holds pace. Home prices jump from year earlier. So if we add those up, actually, it, the, uh, the headlines were 52% negative and 48% positive in the month of January for the uh, general economic and business news coming out of the Wall Street Journal. So it's about 50-50. Not bad. But it doesn't explain why the GDP suddenly dropped to a negative figure in the fourth quarter suddenly after three years of positive results. So a little farther we go and uh, let's, uh, if we look up our general indicators that are used by many economists and we kind of add them up, as we said, Real GDP went to the negative side of things. Unemployment rate is kind of neutral. It's staying between the high sevens. Industrial production increased recently. The managers, purchasing managers index is expanding. Retail sales has an upward trend. It's positive. 
consumer spending is positive, and the consumer confidence, which is a trademark of the conference board, that fell recently, and so that's a negative. Housing starts are positive. Existing home sales had a downtick, so that's on the negative side. And the conference board uh, leading economic indicators increased, as well did the coincident economic index, both of the conference board. Interesting, though, the high-yield bonds, if you want to look that up on your, on Google, on, uh, <coughs> it's, uh, the symbol is HYG, that took a sudden downturn, a significant negative factor. So there were seven positive uh, indicators that we've used, and four negative and one neutral. Still not really uh, an indication of the sudden drop for the, for the uh, GDP. So now we have to ask ourselves, going forward, is this sudden drop at GDP going to influence, or is it start of a trend for the coming year because if so, once if the stock market gets a whiff of that, it will no longer continue its ascendancy. So what is the outlook for 2013 amidst this sudden downturn in GDP? The GDP is actually about fifteen thousand ninety four billion, roughly about fifteen fifteen trillion. And as we said, the GDP has suddenly gone negative, but the estimated growth is about two percent, and the US average growth of the GDP is three point two three percent. So our negative was way below and of course our estimated growth that's still below and of course we believe that here, on the philosophical angle, that the anemic growth that's happening is due to excess laws and regulations and most recently now, higher taxes. So with these higher taxes that have just come on board with Obamacare and, and uh, the higher taxes for the uh, more well-to-do in society, what will that factor be in the coming year? It's possible that defense spending, which was uh, cut drastically in the fourth quarter, could have contributed to that negative GDP. If we compare it to European growth, which is not doing too well, uh, that's in the negative perc uh, 1%. European GDP in its total is about 13 trillion, almost together as much as the, uh, the U.S. In 2011, it was also negative at 0.5 percent contracting. contracting. Average uh, European growth is 1.73. Unemployment is well above ours and has stayed there for some time at 11.7. Its average is 9.27, well above our average. And that's probably due to its excess laws, regulations, and higher taxation. U.S. corporate profit, $1.968 trillion in the third quarter. Not bad. Actually, uh, if we go to uh, uh, Y charts, uh, the, uh, there's actually a, an ascendancy, an increase graph of corporate profits to GDP, which is 11.02%. And that trend has been rising over uh, since uh, 2009. So that's a, that's a real good indicator. But we've got one more problem here. The sequester is now going to happen. So that's going to, most likely anyway, it appears as, as it, to be uh, on the near horizon. And that monthly or uh, I'm sorry, that yearly cut will be about $85 billion off the federal deficit. Well, the Keynesians off the, de uh, off the, off the federal um, 
yearly expenditures. So the Keynesians believe that government spending, if you decrease the government spending, it's going to hurt the economy. Well, I'm not quite so sure here because 85 billion, if we take out, if we add in the government efficiency of 85 billion, so we take 0.85 and we're just estimating an, an inefficiency coefficient for the presence of government in its spending habits at uh, 0.85 and we 0.85 times our 85 billion, we get 72.25 billion. If we divide that into the, uh, the total GDP, 15.094, we get about a 0.4%. That's 0 0.004. Not much. So that can come right off, that inefficiency factor can come right off uh, the GDP estimated at, let's say, 2%. So it doesn't look like it's really going to affect it here at 1.96 GDP. So, that in mind, we, I don't think the sequester will have much influence uh, on the immediate spending habits of the United States economy, and thus I don't think it will have any uh, uh, influence on, on profits, and the stock market should continue its upward trend. So enough of me. Let's get uh, Rick into the conversation and see what he thinks for uh, 2013. Rick, uh, open up that crystal ball and uh, let us know your thoughts. Well, the, the, um, based on my reading, the consensus seems to be the U.S. is going to grow 2 to 2.2 percent in that range. Uh, I have to believe with uh, new taxes coming in, um, some influence from the sequestration, which, by, by the way, is necessary. We need to, it's the only practical way to cut spending. You're, the Republicans are going to be forced to impose that deal on Obama because he won't, he won't negotiate on cutting anything, it appears. Uh, so that, that, that's almost a given, and I'm glad. Um, it'll probably be a good signal actually for uh, market sentiment uh, in the stock market on balance, uh, even if it does nibble away at, 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 at uh, overall spending on the short term. Uh, but with new taxes coming in uh, through Obamacare, et cetera, I have to believe, and with the, much of the world, uh, especially Europe and Japan, uh, either close to or in recession, uh, it, I have to believe that any uh, revisions to the U.S. GDP forecast, and let's be honest, um, the economists have not been, had a very good record in recent years in terms of predicting uh, how the U.S. economy is going to fare. I have to believe they're going to be downward. Um, because, uh, frankly, they're so unaccustomed to an environment in which taxes are rising that it appears as if they've forgotten what the impact of that is. Um, so my expectation is uh, even if uh, U.S. GDP does not uh, continue to be negative for the whole year, uh, it will be mediocre at best. And the fact that the stock market in uh, the United States, uh, Japan, uh, is rocketing forward uh, should not be mistaken for some indication that fundamentally uh, the U.S. economy is uh, in a strong growth phase. It's not. Mm -hmm. What about uh, besides the sequester, are there any other major influences that uh, can come upon uh, the 2013 prognostications? Um, is there any other major influences here? Well, to, to my mind, the, the problems in Europe haven't really been solved. Uh, all that has happened, really, is that the European Central Bank has agreed to buy bonds without limit, and 
that's obviously calmed the markets. Uh, but in terms of attacking uh, the central problem, which is the outstanding debt, uh, it doesn't seem to me that uh, much progress has been made. And so it wouldn't be surprising uh, if uh, at some point later in the year, there isn't yet another hiccup on, on that score uh, because one or more of these countries uh, doesn't um, reduce its government spending quickly enough, can't pay down debt quickly enough, and suddenly that th these issues are back in the headline and we know what happens. Uh, and so I, 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 in the absence of any fundamental um, measures to deal with the, the still existing problems uh, of excessive indebtedness, government indebtedness in Europe, I don't see why that's suddenly going to just disappear. So you, so you think that the, uh, the overspending of the governments and particularly of the, the southern uh, European nations can again influence the, uh, uh, the stock market in 2013, uh, but will it, I mean, am I incorrect in that, that assumption first before I go on? Yeah, I think it could crop up at, at any time over the course of the year. Um, and so I, I just think the stock market, what the stock market is indicating is that earnings are okay. There's a huge risk that if interest rates rise, you're going to lose money on bonds. So, and this is an argument, frankly, that, you know, Barron's and Wall Street Journal and a lot of other commentators are making. You, you know, bonds have become very dangerously overinflated. There's a bond bubble, effectively. And so the stock market represents the lesser of two evils in terms of valuation. Hmm. Okay, so what about uh, what about the tax picture? Uh, we've got the Obamacare uh, tax, which has just gone in, and and now everybody's been hit. Was it a two point eight or three uh, percent taxation, somewhere around there? Uh, and it's going to come off everybody's uh, paycheck here uh, shortly. Is that is that going to influence the um, uh, the economic picture and the stock market picture going uh, going forward? I mean, will it re will it have an influence on? GDP and uh, all the other indicators that we uh, uh, that we were talking about earlier, such as retail sales and everything else. I know that actually one of the headlines uh, recently was that the retailers are worried about uh, the uh, the Obamacare tax uh, cutting into uh, into retail sales. <clears throat> well, well, yes, I think it I think it will because uh, by the way, the U.S. consumer has begun borrowing again, so. Retail indebtedness, uh, consumer indebtedness, sorry, is you know once again approaching you know, pre-crisis levels. Uh, so this is it's not as if incomes are growing uh, significantly. Uh, and in fact, if you you know look at the combined indebtedness, including student debt, by the way, which is growing at a rampaging pace, uh, the. the the, the marginal buying is being funded yet again by uh, more debt, and that always poses risks. Okay, you know, and I forgot to mention, there's a isn't there a payroll tax uh, that uh, payroll tax hiatus has now come back into effect? So the combined actually is probably closer to five percent uh, be hitting uh, that will be hitting paychecks here shortly. Uh, I think there's a, uh, so both of those taxes, certainly uh, that could influence uh, the economic activity. Do you think it'll, that combined taxation will have an effect in 2013, one, in the GDP, as we're so here concerned with, and with corporate profits by reducing retail sales? How much of an influence do that, do you think that'll make? Well, I, I think it'll have a significant influence here in the U.S. Um, corporate profits are a slightly different story. You know, U.S. companies, many of the largest companies, are diversified and can export overseas. And in fact, frankly, emerging markets, at least certain of them, are doing better than the developed markets. And that's been the case for the last uh, few years. Uh, so they have other sources for, for making profit. But as far as the consumer is concerned, you know, that comes straight off, uh, straight out of your hide. Um, and so it's hard to imagine that it wouldn't have 
a significant impact on spending habits. Uh, and you know, even if the consumer continues to borrow in order to make up the difference, that can only go on for so long. However, we do have a, an increase in corporate profits, just a little by little by little. If that corporate profits will actually uh, produce personal income increases, that could uh, be enough to uh, overcome uh, the additional taxation. Uh, is it? You think? Uh, do you think that might overcome the initial taxation and thus be able to uh, maintain at least a two percent growth? What do you think for uh, corporate? Pro as you mentioned, uh, corporate profits are now uh, looking overseas uh, to increase their uh, uh, their sales there, uh, and as corporate profits increase, uh, often they pass that along to employees. Uh, uh, as well as uh, dividend holders and, and stock uh, their, their shareholders. Well, I think, you know, certainly capital gains and dividends disproportionately um, benefit uh, wealthier people and 401k plans and such. Uh, I, you know, the, the consensus earnings growth I've seen for the U.S. this year is around 6%. That's the latest figure I've seen. And that's it's, that's better than negative growth. You said that was 6% for, for GDP? It's not a, or, it's or not a barn profit. burner. <laughs> so that 6% was, again, what, whether that was uh, GDP or uh, corporate that's, profit? No, that's for earnings. Uh, earnings. Corporate profits. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, corporate, prof, uh, corporate earnings before taxes. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, probably after taxes, actually. That's okay. after taxes. Okay, I hadn't I hadn't seen that. So if uh, if that's a six percent increase, that'll be re uh, that'll be excellent, and we can uh, expect to see that that percentage of eleven point two profit to GDP rise, and that'll be certainly great for uh, uh, for the stock market and for the uh, for the economy in general. Um, so overall, we've got government spending uh, in Europe. We've got the sequester reducing spending here. Great. Um, and we've got, but we've got the rise on taxes. If we take the overall picture, what is your assessment for 2013? I think the most important factor bearing on asset prices is the behavior of now virtually all the major central banks across the world. They continue to print money. Money is uh, speculatively flowing into various asset classes. Uh, so, under the cir current circumstances, it's not unreasonable, given the overvaluation of the bond market generally, not in every subclass of, of, of issue, that money can and should move from the bond market to other asset classes, whether it's real estate or the stock market or something else. Uh, so, I, I'm not surprised to see the stock market outperforming what uh, even three months ago anyone thought was possible so uh, actually what you're actually what you're stating here is that there are people are trying to get out of cash and get into something that has tangible results to avoid the inflation of the local currency is that is that the uh, the statement here well they're, they're, they're searching for some sort of return that isn't at risk of, of collapse. And there's a, there's a growing perception that parts of the bond market are at risk of collapse. That's exactly what Bill Gross is saying, for example, PIMCO. And in fact, he's advising his investors to get into gold, not the stock market. So he sees you know, enormous risk going forward. Byron Wien's opinion is that the stock market is going to rise this year and end up at the end of the year exactly where it started. In other words, the fundamentals of the U.S. economy are not strong enough that it will lead to a sustained improvement in earnings. Okay. You know, and I, I think I, uh, I agree overall with that assessment. Uh, we, we're looking back here to our, our little chart here that we started with, an estimated growth of 2%, but it's got some regulatory and, uh, uh, and, and some uh, subtraction to that, probably uh, leading it down to, uh, to one or one and a half percent, which is anemic, which, and, uh, and if we correlate that into the stock market, 
uh, one and a half or a two percent increase in the stock market. Not much to write home about. Uh, and that would probably be commensurate with the statement you just made or uh, about those uh, prognostications, stock market ending up just about where it, uh, where it started. Uh, I, 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 have to, uh, I have to agree with that assessment. I think it, uh, uh, it's uh, positive now because it's relief of having got through the fiscal cliff uh, and we're in a kind of a relief rally and then it'll just narrow, it'll just level off and stay that way for the, for the, uh, for the rest of the year. Uh, any final comment uh, on your side uh, about that? Well, uh, I'm just, I think it's a trading, it's a trading environment. Uh, one has to be very, very alert. Uh, there are definitely some profit opportunities uh, in the stock market, but uh, it's the kind of uh, market situation where uh, you're not going to be able to sleep well at night. Okay. Thank you, Rick. And I want to thank our audience, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for joining The Philosophical Angle.